Dr. Mark Changizi here with your Science Moment. Today I'm going to talk about an interesting facet of the COVID phenomenon, by which I mean COVID hysteria, the massive civil rights violations that have been going on for the last two years almost. And one of the interesting things about the civil rights violations is that for those that are under what I would say the mass hysteria, if you suggest to them that there's civil rights violations, they just look at you and they'll blink. What, what civil rights violations? They, m many of them, I mean, there are some that say, yeah, it's okay to have civil rights violations. They recognize that they're civil rights violations and it's okay, they justify them. Um, but most people, in my experience, um, don't believe that there are civil rights violations or maybe they'd say, yeah, but they're, you know, they're just so minor and just don't even really count. They, um, they just are not something to worry about. And I think uh, the question is why are people like this? And I think the best way to think about that is that um, when there are taboos, um, then most of us don't think of the uh, uh, constraints that we have not to do those. If there are, let's say, legal constraints that you're not allowed to do those, we don't consider them legal constraints at all. Um, so, for example, uh, you know, um, and this is just sort of disgusting, but incest, uh, you, you know, if there are laws against incest, and there hardly even needs to be laws for the most part, um, the idea that we're having our freedoms constrained by virtue of there being laws against incest um, is absurd. We were like, no, that's not really, so none of us would ever think of it that way at all, because it's so gross, it's a taboo, it's a, it's a moral, uh, it's, it's a very morally uh, packaged kinds of, kind of issue. So we don't think of it as a civil rights uh, violation, whereas, of course, in some abstract sense, it is constraining the choices of, let's say, adult, I'm just talking about adult incest, and not, you know, two adults should be able to do whatever they want, but so none of us consider that. Um, and there are other kinds of things that, that uh, you know, that we don't, we're so used to, uh, we're so accustomed to us and nobody ever wanted to do them because they'd be unethical and totally immoral and any righteous person wouldn't do those things that we don't even deem them uh, to be civil rights violations. So, for example, uh, just not wearing a top or pants, not wearing pants, let's just make it realistic, not wearing pants, like literally nothing when you go to a restaurant. Um, this is not deemed by any of us to be a civil rights violation. So most of us, um, if someone had in mind those kinds of civil rights violations, you said, yeah, but we would all indeed stare at them and blink because we don't consider those civil rights violations. Now, we also find this in, besides COVID, and we'll get to COVID, uh, back when, uh, you know, there, I'm old enough to remember when smoking was allowed in restaurants. And I was actually pushing back to the extent that I didn't have any, you know, a, a social media presence. It was just young and late high school or college. And I was arguing, I, I did, wasn't interested in smoking. I find it annoying. But I, I, in my opinion, I felt like uh, many of these establishments, especially certain kinds of bars, they just want that kind of atmosphere. And it's up to them to decide to have that kind of smokers kind of atmosphere. Smoking is a, is a joy to a certain fraction of the population. And, uh, but... I think most people during those sorts of arguments would just blink at you and say that there's no civil rights violations by virtue of the fact that people are, aren't allowed to smoke. They can always go smoke outside. Uh, the restaurant can't even, it doesn't matter if the restaurant wants to have, so there's not a violation uh, of their rights that they can't allow smoking if they wish to. Um, and the reason it was like that is because those people that are against smoking consider smoking and, and the smoking of the tobacco companies engaged in a, a very unrighteous evil. Um, it is a variant on prohibition, which is, again, another great example. Prohibition, uh, making uh, uh, alcohol as well as tobacco illegal, was steeped in morality. It was all about uh, you know uh, what a good and righteous person does. Um, so uh, all of those cases are nice examples where when people already have this line that they've created for themselves about where the righteous and unrighteous things uh, are divided, are, are cut off, then th when the law comes in, prevents you from doing those unrighteous things, you don't even feel that it's a civil rights violation at all. Um, whereas, so for example, if the Biden administration suddenly were to say, uh, apples, just out of the blue, you know, apples uh, no longer can be sold, and there's no backstory, no narrative. There's, you know, there's no time or anything to sort, to sort of to create some kind of righteous story about why it's bad to have apples. Just suddenly, you know, it's not that big of a deal. We can survive without apples. Um, it's not. There's nothing important about apples except, for, of course, the poor apple industry and all the things that rely on apples. But anyway, it, we would survive if there was a ban on apples. Um, 
and but we would feel it. Um, apples are, are 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 not important per se, and we can think of even less important cases. But we would all feel that it's a civil rights violation. Well, who the hell are you to stop us from eating apples? And the reason that we feel it is because there's nothing. There's no story about why having apples is is you know righteously wrong at all. Um, so um, that's why these people um, they feel that uh, uh, talking down about the risks of COVID is itself. Um, uh, itself engaged in a kind of, kind of violation. Everything about COVID became steeped back in March of 2020. So if they send everybody home and say, you can't come out of your house, if they shut down businesses, those are, to me, as someone who wasn't pulled up in this hysteria and to all of my colleagues in this, in this debate, uh, are obvious, severe civil rights violations. You can't imagine anything more severe. Um, requiring that people put masks over their facial identity, their emotional expressions, is a clear and obvious civil rights violation, even separating out the harms, even if there was no harms. Even if it was effective, which is you know, setting that aside. These are clear civil rights violations. Um, requiring mandatory, uh, how many people you can have in your home. Um, all of these kinds of requirements, uh, uh, no informed consent for medication, and in many countries, uh, you know, forcing medication on you, um, literally, uh, it will send you to jail. Uh, the amount of uh, civil rights violations suddenly went through the roof since 2020 of, of uh, March of 2020. And the reason that most of the people on the other side don't see it is because when this happened, all of these things, anything that was told as part of the narrative are things that can help this horrible, evil pandemic that's hitting us became things that we have to do. And so to, to not do those things, to not lock down, to not wear a mask, to not be vaccinated, all of these things were just as bad as smoking or worse, or just as bad as having alcohol back during abolition, just as bad as incest. I mean, that's an extreme example, but they're into their minds. It's no longer a line. It's, and if it's, if it's no longer a noticeable line because on the other side of it is things are things that are unethical. That's why it doesn't feel like civil rights violations at all. And if you're actually listening to this and you're on the other side, try to notice that, that the reason that you don't see these things as civil rights violations is because somewhere along the line, probably early March of 2020, this thing became moral and ethical to you rather than a strict epidemiological kinds of judgments and judgments about what governments can and cannot do, given the civil rights that we have, especially here in the West. And that was your science moment.